Hello Ben, welcome. In this video, I've got a nice little mini here for you. It's an Age of Sigmar Liberator, your rank and file of the Stormcast Eternal faction. I did him up in a nice steel armor with some brass and green accents. I didn't want to go with the gold for these guys because there's going to be a lot of them on the field and I thought it would be a bit much. I'd rather save the gold for more like the Lord Celestins and more powerful characters. As in most cases, you want to leave off some parts, so I left off the shield to better access the mini. Glued them to the base though. Typically I would leave the base off. But in my eagerness to get these guys all glued together, I did most of them on the base. I'm going to start off with this oily still. I just picked this up. It's a rather nice color. You don't want to thin it too much though, or it separates almost into its namesake, almost like an oil. The black in it will actually separate, so don't over thin this, but it gives you a nice kind of. Uh, it probably looks about like a lead belcher from GW or a gun from Model Air, but it's a nice base color. Gives you a little room to work down into a shade and work up into a highlight. Did everything but a few of those features like the shoulders. It's going to go in with some shade. I had a little bit of purple here just for a little bit of variety. It's barely noticeable, but you can go with as much of that as you want. If you want a little bit more of a fantasy look or a little more interest, add a little more of the Druchy Violet. I'm just going to cover the entire mini with this, aiming for the shadow areas a little heavier, as well as the shield. Just did this top portion in the still in the back in his hand. Back really isn't going to be seen, so you don't have to worry about that. I'm going to tone down this brassy brass a little bit with armor brown. It's going to hit these shoulder plates, as well as the little sun symbol on his head and the loincloth scale armor. didn't want to go with just the gold. I think the brass and the contrast to the steel is very striking and, and I quite like it. And these little minis you're always going for trying to create a contrast. More contrast, more interest, more able you're able to see the mini. Also there's a little belt buckle and the dagger, though later on I changed those to gold just to give a little variety. I'm just going to mix up a little gun still, do the hammerhead. It could have been the same as oil is still, it doesn't really matter. I just wanted to go a little bit brighter, give it a little bit more of a almost like um, regular still, whereas his armor is a little bit more like plate still. This is more like a ionized or harder still some retributor armor, hit all the gold decorative areas, so common it is hammer. Like I said I go over this with some gold instead. Anything that just doesn't look functional but is more decorative I try to hit with the gold. I also, I don't show it but I did a few of the little scales just a little randomly I did the little gold as well just to give it some difference. All the symbols like on his shoulder plate and the shield did his gold as well. I'm just going to use Agrax Earth Shade to shield all the brass and the gold. pretty heavy on these brass areas. Now 
I'm going to start the highlights on the armor. It's about a 1-1 one -one mix gun still. You always want to start with a darker highlight when you start building. In other words, you won't, if you start too bright with your highlight, then you really have nowhere to go up. So I always want to start with a darker mid-tone and work your way up or down into a darker shade. Just being a little rough here with this dry brush because I'm going to come back in later with a little bit of black and hit the shaded areas a little better. This is still, it's a regular brush, but it's still barely any paint on the brush. So more of an overbrush. I'm just going to start working my way up to small and smaller areas on the armor. Always aiming for the high areas, like a 30 degrees looking down, leaving the underside shaded. I want to hit the edges, anything that would catch the light. Just hitting the middle area of that, leaving the sides, just hitting the corners and edges. Now for the highlight, the highest point I'm using P3 Quicksilver I think has a very nice, very high sheen. I'm just going to hit the highest reflective areas, like the rivets and the top edges. first dry brush kind of went a little overboard. Now I'm going to come in with a very thin down black, like a wash, and I'm just going to reestablish some of these shaded areas, hitting the undersides, Dirt, just kind of dirtying up a little bit so it's not so clean. It's the contrast between the black shaded areas and the highlight still is what gives it the realism. Now just very little brassy brass, like an overbrush I'm just going to hit the all the brass areas. For the first highlight, just to reestablish the color a little bit. There's really barely any paint on this. going to add a little bit of Auric Armor Gold and start hitting the higher points.
Not just pure armor gold. Just very little on the brush. The It gives it a nice interesting look, the brass to gold. And for a final highlight, I go with just a little bit of quicksilver. Just hit the very tiniest, highest points. Some quicksilver for the hammer highlights. It's basically just going to edge highlight this. just to give it a little more interest so it's not so clean I'm gonna add a few little scratches and dents this is just pure black Lego monocolored black just thin it down I'm just gonna add a line of it you could do this really anywhere I wouldn't go overboard though but it's got a nice line to establish the indent shadow area and I'm gonna come in with some quicksilver and connecting the bottom of it, leaving the black on the top, I'm going to come right underneath it. This is where, on the indent, you would imagine that the light would hit the bottom of the indent and reflect, whereas in the inside would be shadowed. You can really do this anywhere you want. I didn't show it all because my camera kind of cut out on me, but I did a few scratches on his chest, his knee pads, a few areas and on this hammer. It's relatively easy to do. Just have to establish a shadow and a reflection. The reflection will always be on the underside. I'm going to start on the fabric areas as well as the armor plates and the shield. I'm just going to go with a nice green. I had a little bit of blue. I don't want to add too much though. Turn it into a turquoise. I wanted it to be more like a deep forest green, so I added a little black as well. Can't really give you a ratio on that. It was very little black. You just want to bring it down a little bit, but not too much so that you have room to shade down further in the recesses. It's going to give a good coat on all the fabric areas as well as the armor plate and the shield and around the loincloth. Now I'm going to add a little bit more black, about 2 to 1. I'm just going to hit all the recesses for the shading. And on my palette basically I have that mid-tone base mix that I made and another one that goes down and then just pure part grain flat and I'll just add mixes. You can do as many mixes as you want. Variations from the dark black green up to light and just it's hard to explain. Just start shading and then work your way up to the highlight. You could wet blend, do it all. If you have everything on your palette, little sections, then it's easy to wet blend and just start working your way up makes for a lot better transition that way you don't have to layer as much I just 
just start adding the part grain flat to the base mix and working my way up to the highlight areas. I'll just kind of go back and forth. There's no real method to it. You just, I just kind of go back and forth with different paints, adding where it, I think it needs it. Also did these little tassel areas, as well as the belt around his waist connected to that belt buckle in the middle. to the highlight areas. It was relatively flat there, but I decided to give it a little bit more of a curve. Comes off relatively muted, a muted color, but I quite like it. Tend to do my minis a little bit darker. If you were doing this for like say a competition piece you would want to up the contrast a lot more from the dark to light as I say contrast is everything Coming along quite nice. Got enough contrast in there for some interest, but not too much. The I did the base mix on to the shield as well as the shoulder pad. I'm basically going to do the same thing as I did before. Put down a little bit of the darker mix around the edges and then start working my way up to Pure Park Green Flat. forth blending as needed in the area that you're at. If you wanted to go to a higher contrast, just add a little bit of white and work yourself in even tighter. To end it, I just basically took the highlight and just made it into a glaze and just went over all the armor plates that were green. I did that a couple times. That'll just kind of tie the blends together a little bit. For the hair, I'm going to start with ivory. Really have a monocolor ivory. Instead of a pure white, you want a kind of off white. Typically, find it's best to use an off white in most areas. In most cases, when you're working with white, pure white, 
it, I mean, like I said before, it doesn't give you much room to go up. So I'm just going to cover this. Careful of all those little brass areas you carefully painted. Now I'm going to shade it with some darker tones. You could use really anything here. I'm using Minoth White Base with a little flat earth. You could use Agrax the Earth Shade if you wanted, or like a sandy color. This will tint it just slightly towards almost like a blonde and add some darker tones into the recesses. And then I'll come back with a little bit of ivory and just hit the highlights again. This will give you kind of a dirty blonde, platinum blonde look. And for the scabbard and the handle, I'm just going to do a corn red and just shade or highlight up to Mephiston. Uh, I didn't show the painting of this, but I did those uh, still, the little designs on his cloak and that thing. I'm going to come in now and just do a little shading with Newman Oil. Just to separate it from the green a little bit and make it pop more. I'm just going to do a final high highlight through and fang still and just get some of the brass. Any, any place that really looks like it needs it. This isn't really necessary, I just thought I would use a little bit more contrast in some areas. And for the parchment scroll, just Zandri dust for the base color. Get a nice good coverage. going to shade it with Agrax Thirst Shade. just want to really load it up so that the symbols pop with this color. And I'm just going to add the highlight Shoppy Bone. I'm going to go in an up and down pattern with the parchment layers because it looks like it streaks. You get little cracks going up and down, so let's continue that little pattern. This is just really an overbrush, barely any on the brush. Final highlight, just add a little bit of white to the shopty bone, hit the edges, and you're done. Nice little color scheme. I like the contrast between the brass and the steel and the green. Nice change of colors instead of always being gold to blue. Very nice minis. And there you go. Uh, thank you for watching my video. Thank you for subscribing. I didn't expect so many subscribers so soon. Um, definitely try to get a video out every couple of weeks was my original goal. Instead of going a month like I did this time. But um, thank you and I'll see you next time.